there, welcome back to Corpse Factory. We're... We're doing things. Perhaps that's why I'm so desperate to fill the void she left in my life. Desperate to distract myself with love from another. Oh yeah, he's in this... Little state. He... <laughs> And yet, at the time, I didn't want to let her go. I wanted to hold her old, lifeless corpse, my body, and simply waste away. I could join her in the afterlife. In fact, I was so attracted to her corpse that I did something I'd never done before. Not once in my history of toying with dead bodies, I decided to keep her. Uh. Ah. I didn't know whether it was out of despair or desperation. No, depression or desperation, yeah. I don't really know why I decided to do some odd thing. Uh, just by a single disturbing idea. I emptied out the small storage closet in, in that old apartment. Guarded everything within. Then I carefully did delicately lovingly placed Yuzuko inside that dark space. And she stood against the wall. How almost casually, almost like she alive. I held her in place, rope. Fastened wall a loop around her neck and a few paintings around her wrist. He, he, he snagged a little, but it wasn't overly noticeable. There Shizuko stood before me, though her gaze was lowered. I could almost almost fool myself into thinking he wanted to greet me. Or she wanted to simply say goodbye. Ah. Goodbye. Something I'd never considered saying to her. I, but I knew it was time to say goodbye to her and to say goodbye to myself to the me that shared the life with, shared the life with her the me that lived in shame of the things I've done I'd done and on no, into the storage room I pulled the uh, Evidence of guilt. All the macabre and sickening phobia. Paranormal. I had collected over the years on a new home with the dark space. Photos of corpses, homo tombs, written and emblemed. Infection, infection, countless books by Obu Sinclair, and another I held dearly in my heart. Everything and evident everyone had made up Kojura, but it's up inside that room. And with one last look at the girl, I slumped, slammed the door, 
locked it tight. The criminal, the criminal act of locking away everything I once loved had a cathartic effect. But the moments after that weren't as clear in my mind. I know that I up that room and concealed the door, but I didn't recall the effort that went into doing so. It can happen. Now that I decided to leave the apartment behind, I didn't recall talking to the landlord. I know that I tried to move on from being the person I once was, but I know how much I truly changed. Because I just, just over a year later, I'm still in the I'm still in this world, taking part in a trip disturbing act. Still obsessed with that with the dead. And I'm still fawning over Shizu and Jericho. Maybe people can ch can't change after all. Maybe I've been fooling myself all this time into thinking that I'm different now. But I'm not. I'm the same as I always was. I'm still just Kojiro. Huh. Maybe it's... maybe that's okay. And we're back at the morgue! Some good news for you. Really? What is it? A few new cadavers were in the morgue when I arrived tonight. Ah! Also, I was thinking... What about? Something funny. We went to such lengths to make sure we didn't get caught stealing cadavers from here. And? Well, it's amusing that the entire place was ransacked by the Human Removal Service, but no one ever investigated. Huh. No one here seemed to really care. We tried so hard to cover our tracks being careful about every single corpse we lifted. Then those assholes just waltzed in and stole everything without any repercussions. Yeah. It makes me sick. I want to bring them down. Yeah. Anyway, how many bodies came in today? Uh, I'm guessing a few. More. Not a great deal, but a start. Give it a week or two and this place should be packed once more. Okay, good. Thanks for letting me know. Of course. See you. Later. Okay. Makes it interesting. Since I have already cataloged the new arrival, I figured I can relax for the rest of my shift. I plant myself on a comfortable steel chair. Parked near the morgue's entry, uh, entryway. A few moments later, I lo lost within the flat, flashing light from my phone screen. Good. Don't know how long I sound out for, but when I came to, Mariko's name is emblemized across my screen. Strange for her to call me now, since she spoke just before. Yo. Yes. You're not going to believe this. Try me. Somebody requested a death. Ah, uh, yeah, that explains the quite excitement in your voice. Congrats. It's been a while. It's been far too long. I thought we were done for. I thought Corpse Girl's website had fallen into obscurity. Happy for you. Kojiro, we can't let this slip through our fingers. We need a victory here. 
This new request has to be fulfilled immediately. Picked. And as we're thinking. I want this victim to die with a bang. I want his death to propel Corpse Girl's name back into the limelight. Roger. Awaiting your orders. I'm sending you the Vic's photo. Get me a corpse that matches his appearance, just like usual. Only got a handful of bodies here, remember? Going to be a long shot. Do whatever the fuck you have to do. Her ice cold comet. Man, leaves no room Mis misinterpretation to be misinterpreted. Copy that. The call ends. I immediately receive a message from Norica. Then it reveals a photo of Corpse Girl's latest victim. Male, in the mid 30s, or. Oh, fairly unremarkable guy. Looks like. What? Looks like what these are in stock. I have myself a, a steel chair. And log the morgue's computer. Scanning through the inventory only a few seconds. There are five cadavers. Total. The four that arrived totally day plus Kimpei Matsumoto looking. Looks though, looking the, through the detail reveals that of the five, three are female and two are male. I immediately rule out that Jimpei look like. Or for the requ this request. If he set body, I doesn't match the victim at all. It all needs hey. The other male. But I don't like the odds of finding a Yeah. I navigate the old kid chambers. Open up the cap. Posing the corpse. Question. Cold air spewing forth from the open opponent. Hugs up the glass. Calmly remove the tip the against my code. Turn them to their rightful place. After unzipping the body bag, a piece of death. Late I have more than accustomed to after many long years of working here. This guy is just as average looking as Coral's victim. Perfect. Seems like the type of person you wouldn't notice in a crowd. Simply a blur against your body. Might be exactly what we need. And from here, I think it's the best time. In the episode, I think this is the best time you're gonna do it. So, I hope you guys have a great moment of time and a great day, too. Well, we question what Ojo's full plan is going to do. I'll see you guys next time.